Hello, chat. It's time to do the ASMR stream. Welcome to another Healthy Gamer GG stream. Just a reminder that although I'm a, I am a psychiatrist, nothing we discuss on stream today should be taken as medical advice. Everything is for entertainment and educational purposes only. How's everybody doing tonight? People good? Nighttime Dr. K. Can I tell you what we've got in store for you today? We can do ASMR with a different accent if you want. ASMR with the Desi root. Trashkin Raider is asking, did we lose a bet? Not exactly Trash Can Raider. The reason we're here tonight is because y'all won the bet. We did a swap it challenge in the month of August and y'all got 2 million points and swapped out like over a thousand hours of useless activities. So as a result, we do an ASMR stream tonight. So we can do all kinds of things. But what I thought I'd do today is we can start with a bedtime story. So let's see. Is this a regular series? We'll, we'll start the accent when we do the bedtime story, okay? Davrius is saying, let's not do all kinds of things. We won't do all kinds of things. Just some unusual things. <laughs> Kapati just... <laughs> you guys want to do ASMR? <laughs> you guys want to do... <laughs> you guys want to do ASMR? DSM? It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. No, dude, hold on a second. Hold on, I've got, I've got the right book. I give you all a choice. We can do Step Up to Medicine or Board Review Book. Oh God, I flipped it open to herpes and there was actually a picture of a penis. Diseases of the skin and hypersensitivity disorders. Inflammatory, allergic, and autoimmune skin conditions. Acne vulgaris. A. General characteristics. Acne vulgaris is an inflammatory condition of the skin that is most prevalent during adolescence. Severe acne is more common in men than in women due to higher levels of circulating androgens. Is reading that sentence getting me banned on Twitch? <laughs> Pathogenesis, obstruction of sebaceous follicles by sebum, obviously by sebum. What else would you obstruct your follicles with? Leads to proliferation of propionibacterium acnes and anaerobic bacterium in the sebum. This obstruction can lead to either non-inflammatory comedomes, commonly known as pimples, or if severe inflammatory papules or pustules. Both non-inflammatory and inflammatory lesions are present in most patients with acne. <laughs> okay, so for real though, we're gonna do bedtime stories tonight. 
people should just be vibing. So here's the challenge about streaming under the Healthy Gamer GG stream. So in my heart of hearts, what I want to be more than anything else is a streamer. But I don't get to be a streamer because I'm Dr. K. Oh, you guys just came up with a great idea. I actually know which book I need to read, but we'll take a quick break in the middle and I'll go get it. Okay, I'll get your real bedtime story later. So today, what I thought I would read, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but there's, uh, it's out of focus. There's uh, a set of Indian, I don't know if they're really ghost stories or fairy tales or what you call them, called Vaital Pachisi. And these stories are basically about a king who goes to a cemetery, or sorry, who goes to a tantric, who's like a dark wizard. And the dark wizard says, gives the king a task. And he tells the king, go into the cemetery and fetch me a vampire. And so King Vikram goes into the cemetery and fi finds this thing that gets translated as a vampire, but honestly, its D&D stats are completely different. So this creature that gets translated as a vampire, because, you know, the people who used to do ancient Indian translations, like these British folks, like they didn't play D&D, so they didn't know stat blocks and stuff. So finds this creature and tries to convince it to come to the Tantric. And the creature, the Baital, the vampire, says, okay, I'll come with you under one condition. And the king says, what's the condition? And the vampire says, as long as you, I'll stay on your back, as long as you don't talk. But the moment you say a word, I'm going to return to my post. And so Raja Vikram, King Vikram says, sure. So he fetches the vampire and he's walking with his son. And the vampire starts telling a story. And what's great about this is that the vampire is basically trolling Raja Vikram. So what the vampire does is he tells a story. So there's the king, right? And he's traveling with his son, the prince. And the Vaital, this vampire, starts telling him stories with, like, stupid morals. So he tries to convince the kid that, like, oh, you know, you should do bad things because that's the moral of the story. And Vikram can't hold his peace. And so what he always ends up doing is he, like, interrupts the Vaital. And then the Vaital laughs and then returns back to the graveyard. So much like a very bad escort quest, which we all know what those are. The, <laughs> the quest failed, and the king has to go back to the cemetery and pick up the Vaital again, where the Vaital says, you know, I'll come with you, but once again, the condition is that you don't speak. And so Raja Vikram ag agrees. And so, since I know how much all of you love fetch quests, we decided to do... Baital Pachisi. So Baital is translated as vampire. For those of you that are interested in the stats of the vampire, so the vampires are not like blood-sucking beasts that can't exist in the daylight. They're more like, I would say like ghouls from traditional D&D, &D, but with like bat wings. They also have some really interesting like powers, so they don't, they can fly, but they actually have the ability to inhabit a corpse and like animate it. So what they'll do is they'll like inhabit like, you know, ravens and even people and stuff like that. And they'll kind of mess around by like animating corpses and then pretending to be the thing. When I DM, I will sometimes introduce Vitals into the campaign. And that's lots of fun because people don't really know what they are, right? You have all these like metagamers that have looked at the monstrous manual and like buy these books and they think they know everything that's why when you're a good dm with metagamers you just make up monsters that are inspired by mythology and have their own stat blocks and different kinds of powers absolutely reanimation jutsu well done so unknown are they malevolent or mischievous i think more of the latter than the former but they're considered to be negative creatures alignment is definitely on the evil axis Ruble Trillions is saying, I thought you meant DM like direct message. <laughs> no. D 
Dungeon Master. Okay. So. I never knew you DM, but it makes so much sense. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys know this, but like part of the reason... You guys want to do some Dr. K lore? So part of the reason that I became a psychiatrist is it's because the specialty that's the closest to being a DM. So what I lo what I realize is like, I just love stories. And when I was like, so when I was in my fourth year of med school, I decided when I went to med school that I was going to be a real doctor. I was going to be an oncologist. And then like, I kind of liked psychiatry a lot in third year. Actually, I didn't like it. I liked the people I worked with a lot and I thought that it was fun. Like I enjoyed going to the hospital every day, but I didn't like psychiatry. I just thought that the people were fun. And so when I was in my fourth year of med school, at the very beginning of med school, I was trying to figure out, okay, like, so I was going to be an oncologist and do like holistic healing and all this stuff, right? Like teach my patients like how to meditate and do yoga and stuff and like reduce their cancer pain. And then one of my mentors was like, okay, so you kind of like psychiatry. So why don't you do this? Do one month of psychiatry and one month of internal medicine. And at the end of the day, just write down what you like about the day and what you don't like about the day. And so what I really found is that at the end of every day, what I liked about psychiatry is that I got to hang out with people and I got to hear stories. And in internal medicine, what I didn't like is that I spent like eight or nine hours in front of a computer, which I'll spend eight or nine hours in front of a computer, but it should be gaming or streaming. Not like looking at lab tests, interpreting CT scans, and writing orders. Which even looking at lab tests and interpreting CT scans can be fun for a while. But, you know, like 70 hours a week, like, nah. I don't even game for 70 hours a week. I don't even game for 7 hours a week. So it felt to me like, because what I loved about D&D was the stories. And psychiatry has, by the way, wilder stories, which I can't share with y'all, unfortunately. But the wildest stories are like, you know, it's it's been really interesting. I mean, it's sort of unfortunate because a lot of the stories, like, I wouldn't say they have bad endings, but they, I come in at the bad ending. And that's actually what's really cool about it is it's like tales of like, trauma right tales of suffering and then as a psychiatrist you kind of enter the picture and you catch people usually at their lowest point but that's actually what's so cool about it is like you enter the picture and then their lives actually improve so it's kind of weird it's like almost like a reverse climax you know like when you think about a standard story it starts off slow builds to a climax and then kind of declines whereas i felt like as a psychiatrist it's the other way around so it starts off and then things go downhill and then you enter the point at like, you enter the story at like the lowest point. And then hopefully with a, a lot of hard work, some compassion and just a healthy dose of luck, like you can turn things around for people. So. Yeah, when Wee Hanen is saying you are the point that they get better, but that's, that's true of all doctors, right? That's not specific to me. We understand that, right? Like if you are in a car accident and you break a leg, things turn around for you once you see the doctor. That's not special to me. It's like you go to the emergency room, you see an orthopedic surgeon, and then things turn around. Like that's what all doctors do. If you get COVID, if you get a fever, like you go see a doctor and then things turn around. Like that's what our profession does. Okay. So let's get started. So, King Vikram and the Vampire. Okay, we've got four options, all right? I'm gonna sh share a poll with y'all. So we can tell the story of a high-minded family. So why don't we vote? I'm gonna start a poll. Content does not meet guidelines. What? Uh, what? <laughs> Okay, this is so weird. Okay, so high-minded family, maybe maybe it's because it has the word woman in the poll. Person who told the... Okay, so here are the four options. The story of the high-minded family, 
person who told the truth, it was woman, thief who laughed and wept, and the folly of many wise fools. There we go. Okay. So why don't you all vote on which story you want? The story of the high-minded family, the people who told the truth, the thief who laughed and wept, or the folly of many wise fools. All right, looks like folly of many wise fools is winning. By the way, I haven't read the story. Hopefully we don't get banned. <laughs> I mean, it's like a book that was, you know, is like, it's literature, <laughs> but you never know. The one that I didn't offer y'all is of the use and misuse of magic pills. No joke. I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, you can't see it. It's out of focus. But that one we're choosing not to include. Okay, so we're going to do of many wise fools, okay? With accent, yes? Okay. So before we get th read the story, let's just take a moment to... Prepare. So if we're going to bang, now's a good chance to stretch a little bit. Get ready to lay down. Close your eyes a little bit. If y'all aren't ready to go to bed and don't want to fall asleep yet, but do want to enter a state of relaxation, you can adopt Shavasan, which ironically is translated from Sanskrit as corpse pose. So you can lay flat on your back with your palms face up by your sides, your feet slow, slowly, uh, slightly tilted apart, slightly apart, and let your feet kind of hang out outward, if that kind of makes sense. And we'll begin. Okay? Close your eyes and listen. The Vampire's Seventh Story Showing the Exceeding Folly of many fools. The Baital resumed, of all of the learned Brahmins and the learnedest universe of Gaur, Bengal, none was so celebrated as Vishnu Swami. He could write verse as well as prose in dead languages, not very con correctly, but still better than all his fellows, which constituted him a distinguished writer. He had history, theosophy, and the four Vedas of scriptures at his fingers' ends. He was skilled in the argut science of nyas or disputation. His mind was a mine of Puranic or cosmono, cosm, cosmogonico traditional lore. C O S M O G O N I C O. Okay, new word handed down from the ancient fathers to the modern fathers, and he had written bulky commentaries, exhausting all that tongue of man has to say upon the obscure text of some old philosopher whose works upon ethics, poetry, and rhetoric were supposed by the sages of God to contain the germs of everything knowable. His fame went all over the country, from country to country, he was a sea of excellent qualities, the father and mother of Brahmins, cows and women, and the horror of loose persons, cutthroats, courtiers, and courtesans. As a benefactor, he was equal to Karna, most liberal heroes. In regard to truth, he was equal to the voracious king Yudhishthir. True. He was sometimes at a loss to spell a common word in his mother tongue, whilst he knew to a finger breadth how many palms and paces the sun, the moon, and all the stars are distant from the earth. He would have been puzzled to tell you where the region Yavan lies, whilst he could enumerate in strict chronological succession every important event that happened five or six million years before he was born, he was profoundly ignorant of those that occurred in his own day. 
This is basically like saying he is one of these quantum mechanics experts on Reddit. He understands all of these quantum mechanics things, but has difficulty in the day to day. Also is not a student, did not get good GPA. You understand? I will translate for you. And once he asked a friend seriously, if a cat let loose in the jungle would not in time become a tiger. Yet did all the members of alma mater Kashi, pundits as well as students, look with awe upon Vishnu Swami's livid cheeks and lackluster eyes, grimed hands and soiled cottons? Truly, he is a redditor, right? Grimed hands, lackluster eyes, livid cheeks and soiled cottons even. Yet did all the members of Al- uh, now it so happened that this wise and pious Brahman peer had four sons whom he brought up in the strictest and most serious way. They were taught to repeat their prayers long before they understood a word of them. And when they reached the age of four, they had a variety of hymns and spiritual songs. Then they were set to learn by great precepts and inculcate sacred duties and arguments relating to theology, abstract and concrete. Their father, who was also their tutor, sedulously cultivated, as all best works upon education advise, their implicit obedience, humble respect, warm attachment, and the virtues and sentiments generally. He praised them secretly and reprehended them openly to exercise their humidity. He derided their looks and dressed them coarsely to preserve them from vanity and conceit. Whenever they anticipated a treat, he punctually disappointed them to teach them self-denial. Often when he had promised them a present, he would revoke, not break his word, in order that discipline might have a name and habitat in his household. Truly, he is the father of a redditor. And knowing by experience how how much stronger than love is fear, he frequently threatened, browbeat, and overawed them with the rod and the tongue, with the terrors of this world and with the horrors of the next, that they might be kept in the right way by dread of falling into bottomless pits that bound it on both sides. At the age of six, they were transferred to Chatushpashti or school. Chatupashti. Chatushpati. Chatushpati. Every morning the teacher and his pupils assembled in the hut where the different classes were called up by turns. They labored till noon and were allowed only two hours, a moiety of usual time, for bathing, eating, sleeping and worship, which took up half the period. At 3 p.m. they resumed their labors, repeated, repeating to the tutor what they had learned by heart and listening to the meaning of it. This lasted till twilight. They then worshipped, ate and drank for an hour, after which came a return of study, repeating the day's lessons till 10 p.m. That's actually what school is like in India. It's brutal, dude. People in India have to study so much. In their rare days of ease, for the learned priest, mindful of the words of the wise, did not wish to dull them by everlasting work. They were enjoined to disport themselves with the gravity and decorum that befit young samditats, not to engage in night frolics, no night frolicking, not to use free jests or light expressions, that means no memes, no memes, not to draw pictures on the walls, no graffiti, not to eat honey, flesh, and sweet substances turned acid. How does honey, flesh, and sweet substances turn to acid? I guess that means alcohol? Not to talk to little girls at the well side. On no account to wear sandals, carry an umbrella, or handle a dye even for love. And by no means to steal their neighbor's mangoes. Thou shalt not wear sandals. Thou shalt not carry an umbrella, and thou shalt not by no means to steal their neighbor's mangoes. Sandals, chappals, chappals, we call it chappal. Chappal. As they advanced in years, their attention 
during work time was unremittingly directed to the Vedas. Worldly studies were almost excluded, or to speak more correctly, whenever worldly studies were brought upon the carpet, they were so evil and treated that they well nigh lost all form and feature. History became the annals of Indian Brahmanical principles, opposed to Buddhistical, geography the land of the Vedas, none other being deemed worthy of notice, and law the institutes of Manu, then almost obsolete despite their exceeding sanctity. This is like basically that they were growing up in a religious fundamental household. It is not about law but the laws of Manu, the ancient laws of man which are now out of date. And not learning about geography but land of the Vedas. Only religion is important. But Jatu Harini had evidently changed these children before they were born and Shani must have been in the ninth mansion when they came to light. These are astrological references. Shani is the planet of Saturn, which has exceedingly baleful influence in India and as elsewhere. Each youth as he attained the mature age of 12 was formally entered at the University of Kashi, where without loss of time the first became a gambler, the second a confirmed libertine, the third a thief, and the fourth a high Buddhist, or in other words, an utter atheist. Talk about religious discrimination. Here, King Vikram frowned at his son, a hint that he had better not behave himself as the children of highly moral and religious parents usually do. The young prince understood him, and briefly remarking that such things were common in distinguished Brahman families, asked the Baital what he meant by the word atheist. So, do you remember the story? This is King Vikram turned to his son and the son asked him, what do you mean by atheist? Of a truth, answered the vampire, it is most difficult to explain. The sages assign to it three or four meanings. First, one who de denies that gods exist. Secondly, one who owns that the gods exist but denies they busy themselves with human affairs. And third, one who believes in the gods and their providence, but also believes they are easily to be set aside. Similarly, some atheists derive all things from dead and unintelligent matter, others from matter and energetic but without sense or will, others from matter with forms and qualities generable and conceptible, others from a plastic and methodical nature. Thus the Vishnu Swamis of the world have invested the subject with some confusion. The simple, that is to say, the mass of mortality, have confounded that confusion by reproachfully applying the word, word atheist to those whose opinions differ materially from their own. What that means? First to understand, in the Hindu tradition, there are atheistic sects. It is a acceptable position. Second to understand is what do you call atheist? What the Baital says is people who do not believe what I believe. We use that as indictment of atheist. This is the Baital's point. But I being present, perhaps happily for myself, a vampire, and having just now none of these human or inhuman ideas, meant simply to say that the pious priest's fourth son, being great at second and small in the matter of first causes, adopt to their fullest extent the doctrines of the philosophical Buddhas. Nothing according to him exists but the five elements, earth, water, fire, air or wind and vacuum. And from the last proceeded the penultimate and so forth. With the sage Patanjali, he held the universe to have the power of pro perpetual progression. He called that matter, which is an eternal and infinite principle, beginningless and endless. Organization, intelligence and design, he op opined, are inherent in matter as growth is in a tree. He did not believe in soul or spirit because it could not be detected by in the body and because it was a departure from the physiological analogy. The idea I am, according to him, was not the identification of spirit with matter but a product of the mutation of matter in this cloud-like, error-formed world. He believed in the substance, Sat, 
and scoffed at the unsubstance, asat. He asserted the subtlety and globularity, globularity of atoms which are uncreate. He made mind and intellect a mere secretion of the brain, or rather words expressing not a thing, but a state of things. Reason was to him developed instinct, and life an element of the atmosphere affecting org certain organisms. So essentially he is a materialist, biologist. He held good and evil to be merely geographical and chronological expressions, and he opined that what is called evil is mostly an active and transitive form of good. That is it profound. What we call evil is mostly an active and transitive form of good. Wise words, actually. Law was his great creator of all things, but he refused a creator of law because such a creator would, cre would require another creator and so on in quasi-intermediate series up to absurdity. This reduced his law to a manner of haphazard. To those who, arguing against it, asked him their favorite question, how often might a man, after he had jumbled a set of letters in a bag, fling them out upon the ground before they would fall into an exact poem? He replied that the calculation was beyond his arithmetic, that the man had only to jumble and fling long enough, inevitably to arrive at the end. See, this story is ancient from India. It is basically how long would it take a, a room full of monkeys with typewriters to produce Shakespeare play. Same thing. He rejected the necessity as well as the existence of revelation, and he did not credit the miracles of Krishna because, according to him, nature never suspends her laws, and moreover, he had never seen aught supernatural. He ridiculed the idea of Mahapralai, or the great destruction, for as the world had no beginning, so it will have no end. He objected to absorption, facetiously observing with the sage Jam Jamadagan Jamadagni that it was pleasant to eat sweetmeats, but that for his part he did not wish to become the sweetmeat itself. He would not believe that Vishnu had formed the universe out of the wax of his ears. He positively asserted that trees are not bodies in which the consequences of merit and demerit are received. Nor would he conclude that to men were attracted attached rewards and punishments from all eternity. He made light of the sanskar or, or sacrament. He admitted sattva, raja and tama, but only as properties of matter. He acknowledged gross matter, shtula sharir and atomic matter, sukshma sharir, but not linga sharir or the archetype of bodies. To doubt all things was the foundation of his theory, and to scoff at all who would no doubt was the cornerstone of his practice. Truly a redditor. In debate, he preferred logical and mathematical grounds requiring a categorical because in answer to his why. He was full of morality and natural religion, which some say is no religion at all. He gained the name of atheist by declaring with Gautam that there are innumerable worlds, that the earth was nothing beneath it but circumambient air, and that the core of the globe is incandescent. He was called a practical atheist, a worse form apparently, for supporting the following dogma, that though creation may attest that a creator has been, it supplies no evidence to prove that a creator still exists. On which occasion, Shiromani, a nonplussed theologian, asked him, By whom and for what purpose was thou sent on earth? The youth scoffed at the word sent and replied, Not being thy supreme intelligence or infinite na nihility, I am unable to explain the phenomenon. Upon which he quoted, How sunk in darkness Gaur must be, whose guide is blind Shiromani. Basically, he trolled the person who asked the question, if you don't understand. At length, it so happened that the four young men, having frequently been surprised in fl flagrant delict, were summoned to the dread presence of the university gurus, who addressed them as follows. There are four different characters in the world. He who perfectly obeys the commands. He who practices the commands, but follows evil. He who does neither good nor evil and he who does nothing but evil. 
The third character, it is observed, is also an offender, for he neglects that which is he ought to observe. But ye all belong to the fourth category. Then turning to the elder, they said, In works written upon the subject of government, it is advised, Cut off the gambler's nose and ears, hold his name to public contempt, and drive him out of the country, that he may thus be an example to others. Basically, that is saying, ban the mofo. For they who play more often lose than min, and losing they must either pay or not pay. This bedtime story is brought to you by a crypto casino. Sponsored stream. In the latter case, they forfeit caste. In the former, they utterly reduce themselves. And though a gambler's wife and children are in the house, do not consider them to be so, since it is known when they will be lost. Thus he is left in the state of perfect not tooness solitude, and he will be reborn in hell. O young man, thou hast set a bad example to others, therefore shalt thou immediately exchange this university for a country life. Basically, ban the mofo. Then they spoke to the second offender thus, The wise shun women who can fascinate a man in the twinkling of an eye, but the foolish, conceiving an affection for her, forfeit in pursuit of pleasure their truthfulness, reputation, and good disposition, their way of life and mode of thought, their vows and their religion, and to such the advice of their spiritual teachers comes amiss, whilst they make others as bad as themselves. For it is said, who, he who has lost all sense of shame fears not to disgrace another. And there is a proverb, a wild cat that devours its own young is not likely to ret let a rat escape. I don't know what that one means. Therefore must thou too, O young man, quit the seat of... <laughs> And then the gurus, I will translate. And then the gurus banned the second child. And when the child asked, posted a post asking the mods, why ban me? The mods replied, he who has lost all sense of shame fears not to disgrace another. And another mod saith, a wild cat that devours its own young is not likely to let a rat escape. This is why you have been banned. And somewhere in there, some anti-woman comments are thrown in. Quit this seat of learning with all possible expedition. The young man proceeded to justify himself by quotations from the Leela Shastra, his textbook, by setting line, such lines as, Fortune favors folly and force. And by advising the elderly professors to improve their skill in the peace and war of love, but they drove him out with expectations. This is a good repudiation by the student. He's talking about Leela Shastra, which is the text on play and love. And this is an important Shastric te text as well. That love between men and women, or men and men or woman and woman, all of that is okay. Even there is transgender gods in Hinduism. Did you know? Ardhana Rishwar. We will look at it. You can Google it. You will see. As sagely and as solemnly did the pundits and the gurus reprove the thief and the atheist, but they did not dispense the words of wisdom in equal proportions. They warned the former that petty larceny is punishable with fine, theft on a larger scale with mutilation of the hand, and robbery when detected in the act with the loss of life. And for cutting purses or for snatching them out of a man's waistcloth, the first penalty is chopping off the fingers, the second is loss of the hand, and the third is death. Then they call him a dishonor to the college, and they said, Thou art the greatest of plunderers. Other robbers purloin in property which is worthless. Thou stealest the best. They plunder in the night, thou in the day, and so forth. They told him that he was a fellow who had read his Chauriya Vidya to more purpose than his ritual. Chauriya Vidya is a thieves manual in the Sanskrit tongue. It aspires to the dignity of scripture. See, this is what's cool. In ancient India, 
chor vidya which means the knowledge of thieves so that too is a text they drove him from the door as as he in his shamelessness began to quote texts about the four approved ways of house breaking namely picking out burnt bricks cutting through unbaked bricks throwing water on a mud wall and boring one of wood with a center bit basically it is like map hacking it's like this is how you this is how you use aim bots and things but in those days they did not have fps so the the ways of breaking into the house so it's how to use aim bot how to use lag hack la- how to use map hack how to use disconnect hack that is the modern version understand but they spent 6 mortal hours in convicting the atheist whose abominations they refuted by every possible argumentation by inference by comparison and by sounds by shruti and smriti revelational and traditional rational and evidential physical and metaphysical analytical and synthetical philosophical and philological historical and so forth but they found all their endeavors vain for it is said a man who has lost all shame who can talk without sense and who tries to cheat his opponent will never get tired and will never be put down he declared that a non ad was far more probable than a mod ad the active principle or that the do ad the passive principle or matter he compared their faith with a bubble in the water of which we can now never pre- predicate that it does exist or it does not it is he said unreal as when the thirsty mistakes the meadow mist for a pool of water so this is basically the reddit debate that you will they were arguing at each other but no one was listening he proved the eternity of sound he impudently recounted and justified all the villainies of the vamachari or left-handed sects he told them that they had taken up an ass's load of religion and had better to a up, up, better apply to honest industry he fell foul of the gods accused yama of kicking his own mother mother kicker see that in that day they did not use the f word right so they called it mother kicker yama's mother kicker indra of tempting the wife of his spiritual guide and shiva of associating with low women thus he said no one can respect them do not we say when it thunders awfully the rascally gods are dying do we say that remember chat we can do that next time you hear thunder you can say the rascally gods are dying and when it is too wet these gods these villain gods are sending too much rain briefly the young brahman replied to and harangued them also impertinently if not pertinently that they waxing angry fell upon him with their staves and drove him out of assembly much like debating with a reddit mod they will eventually ban you the more correct you are banned you see it is like internet modding not reddit it is we, we are being mean to reddit then the four thriftless youths returned home to their father who is in just indignation had urged their disgrace upon the pandits and gurus otherwise these dignitaries would never have resorted to st- such extreme me- measures with so distinguished a house he took the opportunity of turning them out upon the world until such a time as they might be able to show substantial signs of reform for he said those who have read science in their boyhood who in youth agitated by evil passions have remained in the insolence of ignorance feel regret in their old age are consumed by the fire of avarice in order to supply them with a motive for the task proposed he stopped their monthly allowance but he added if they would repair to the neighboring university of jayastal and there show themselves something better than a disgrace to their family he would direct their maternal uncle to supply them with all the necessaries of food and raiment in vain the youths attempted with sighs and tears and threats of suicide to soften the paternal heart he was a inexorable for two reasons in the first place after wandering wandering away the wonder with which he had regarded his own failure he felt that a stigma now attached to the name of the pious and learned vishnu swami whose lectures upon management during teens and whose brahman young man's brahman young man's own book 
had been become standard works. Secondly, from a sense of duty, he determined to omit nothing that might tend to reclaim the reprobates. As regards the monthly allowance being stopped, the reverend man had become every year a little fonder of his purse, and he had hoped that his sons would have qualified themselves to take pupils, and thus achieve for themselves, as he framed it, uh, phrased it, a genteel independence. Whilst they openly derided the career, calling it an admirable provision for the more intelligent members of the middle classes, for which reason he referred to them to their maternal uncle, a man known and remarkable for his penuriousness. So basically that is saying he made excuse, right? He did not accept his own shortcoming in raising these children, but blamed them. He also was concerned about the impact on his own reputation. He had written these two books about management during teens. And when you have written two books on management of teens and your children turn out to be screw-ups, what do you do? You force them into being obedient. So you take everything away from them. And lastly, he was starting to really enjoy having money and he did not want to support his sons anymore. The four ne'er-do-wells, foreseeing what awaited them at Jayasthal, deferred it as a last resource, determining first to see a little life and to push their way in the world before condemning themselves to the tribulations of reform. That is basically like saying when you are need to study tomorrow, you say, let me queue up for one more game. Right? We'll, we'll fix it tomorrow. We have to get on the straight and then we must study tomorrow, but one more game. They tried to live without a monthly allowance, and notably they failed. It was squeezing, as men say, oil from sand. The gambler, having no capital and worse still, no credit, lost two or three suvarnas at play and could not pay them, in consequence of which he was soundly beaten with iron short staves and was nearly compelled by the keeper of the hell to sell himself into slavery. Thus he became disgusted and telling his brethren that he would find them at Jayasthal. He departed with the intention of studying wisdom. This is like someone who is posting about YOLOing all of their mortgage and second mortgage on house and things like that. It's the same. We see this even today. A month afterwards came the libertine's turn to be disappointed. He could no longer afford fine clothes. Even a well-washed coat was beyond his means. He had reckoned upon his handsome face and he had matured a plan for laying various elderly conquests under contribution. Judge, therefore, his disgust when all the women, high and low, rich and poor, old and young, ugly and beautiful, seeing the end of his waist waistcloth thrown empty over his shoulder, passed him in the streets without even deigning to look. The very shopkeeper's wives, who once adored his mustachio and had never ceased talking of his elegant gait, despised him. And the wealthy old person who formerly supplied his small feet with the choicest slippers left him to starve. Upon which he also, in a state of repentance, followed his brother to acquire knowledge. Am I not, quote the thief to himself, a cat in climbing, a deer in running, a snake in twisting, a hawk in pouncing, a dog in scenting? Keen as hair, tenacious, basically he was not getting much attention because he could no longer have the fedora. See, all of these things, we have modern translation. You understand? He could not have fedora anymore. So, he's upset. The reply to his own questions was, of course, affirmative. But despite all these fine qualities, and notwithstanding his scrupulousness, strictness in invocating the housebreaking tool, and in devoting a due portion of his gains, gets the mad gains, to the gods of plunder, he was caught in a storeroom by the proprietor, who inexorably handed him over to justice. As he belonged to the priestly caste, the fine imposed upon him was heavy. He could not pay it, and therefore he was thrown into a dungeon where he remained for some time. But at last he escaped from jail when he, he made his parting bow at Kartikeya, stole a branklet, brank, blanket from one of the guards, and set out for Jayasthal, cursing his old profession. The atheist also found himself in a position that deprived him of all of his pleasures. He delighted in after-dinner controversies and in bringing up the light troops of his wit 
to bear upon the unwieldy masses of lore and logic opposed to him by polemical Brahmans, who out of respect of his father did not lay in action against him for overpowering them in theological disputation. In the strange city of which he had removed, no one knew the son of Vishnu Swami, and no one cared to invite him to the house. Once he attempted his usual trick upon a knot of sages, who sitting round a tank were recreating themselves quoting mystical Sanskrit shlokas of abominable long-windedness, much like this story. The result was his being obliged to ply his heels vigorously in flight from the justly incensed literati, to whom he had said tush and pish at least a dozen times in many minutes. Tush and pish are basically bannable offences. They've just changed now, right? We have different words. He therefore also followed the example of his brethren and started for Jayasthal with all possible expedition. Arrived at the house of the maternal uncle, the young man, as by one ascent, began to attempt unloosening of his purse strings. Signally failing in this and other notable schemes, they determined to lay in that stock of facts and useful knowledge which might reconcile them with their father and restore to them to that happy life at Gaur, which they despised, which now brought tears to their eyes. Then they debated with one another what they should study. That branch of preternatural popularity called white magic found with them favor. They chose a guru or teacher strictly according to the orders of faith, a wise man of honorable family and affable demeanor who is not a glutton nor leprous, nor blind of one eye, nor blind of both eyes, nor very short, nor suffering from whitlows, asthma or other disease, nor noisy and talkative, nor with any defect about the fingers and toes. A grand discovery had been lately made by a certain physiologico-philosophico-psychologico-materialist, a Jayasthalian, that is really just four words put together, in investigating the vestiges of creation, the cause of causes, the effect of effects, and the original of that matter, which some regard as an entity, others as non-entity, others self-existent, others merely specious and therefore unexistent, he became convinced that the fundamental form of organic being in a globule of having another globule within itself. Do you want me to read again? <laughs> Let's do it again. And this is basically copy pasta. You understand? Copy pasta. In investigating the vestiges of creation, the cause of causes, the effect of effects, the original origin of that matra, matter, which some regard as an entity, others as a non-entity, others self-existent, others merely spacious and therefore unexistent. He became convinced the fundamental form of organic being is a globule having another globule within itself. After it happened, <laughs> Saya the Shupuf is saying, what the hell did I tune into? Saya, my friend, you're not going to get an answer for... Oh my God. Dude. Four more pages? <laughs> All right, let's go. In, in those days, the invention, being a novelty, engrossed the thoughts of the universal learned who were in a fever of excitement about it. Some believed in it so implicitly that they saw, and this is how we are putting you to sleep, okay? Some believed in it so implicitly that they saw in every experiment a hundred things which they did not see. Others were so skeptical and contradictory that they would not perceive what they did see. Those blended with each fact their own deductions, whilst these span round every reality the web of their own prejudices. Curious to say, the Jayasthalians, amongst whom the luminous science arose, hailed it with delight, whilst the Gaurians derided its claim to be considered an important addition to human knowledge. Let me try to remember a few of their words. Unfortunate human nature, wrote the wise of Gaur, against the wise of Jayasthal, wanted no crowning indignity but this. You had already proved that the body is made of the basest element, earth. You had argued away the immovability, the ubiquity, 
the permanency, the eternity in the divinity of the soul, for is not your favorite axiom, it is the nature of limbs which thinketh in man. The immortal mind is, according to you, an ignoble viscous. The godlike gift of reason is the instinct of a dog which somewhat was highly developed. Still you left us something to hope. Still you allowed us to boast. Still life was a thread connecting us with the giver of life. But now, with an impious hand, in blasphemous rage, ye have rent asunder the last frail tie, and so forth. Truly a scathing downvote. They basically downvoted the, the post, is what it is saying. Welcome, thrice welcome, this latest and most admirable development of human wisdom, wrote the sage J.S. Thalians against the sage Gaurians. This is the upvote, okay? Which has assigned to man his proper state and status and station in the magnificent scale of being. We have not created the facts which we have investigated and which we now proudly publish. We have proved materialism to be nature's own system, but our philosophy of matter cannot overturn any truth, because if erroneous, it will necessarily sink into oblivion. If real, it will tend only to instruct to enlighten the world. Wise are ye in your generation, O ye sages of Gaur, yet withal wondrous illogical, and much of this kind. Concerning all of which, mighty king, now we get to the story. I, as a vampire, have only to remark that these two learned bodies, like your Rajaship's nine gems of science, were in the habit of talking most about what they least understood. This is basically the internet, no? This is a good story, actually, once you get through all the words. The four young men applied to the whole force of their talents to mastering the difficulties of the life-giving process, and in due time their industry obtained its reward. Then they determined to run home, to return home. As with beating hearts they approached the old city, their birthplace, and gazed with moistened eyes upon its tall spires, grim pagodas, its verdant meads and venerable groves. They saw a kanjar, who, having tied up in a low bundle the skin and bones of a tiger which he had found dead, was about to go on his way. Then said the thief to the gambler, Take we these remains with us, and by means of them prove the truth of our science before the people of Gaur, to, offense, to the offense of their noses. This is basically saying, let's troll them. Being now possessed of knowledge, they resolved to apply it in its proper purpose, namely, power over the property of others. Accordingly, the venture, the gambler, the atheist kept the conjure in conversation whilst the thief vivified a shank bone. The bone thereupon stood upright and hopped about in so grotesque a won and wonderful a way that the man being frightened fled as if I had been close behind him, I being the Baital, the vampire. Vishnu Swami had lately written a very learned commentary on the mystical words of Lokakshi. The scriptures are at a variance, the tradition is at variance. He who gives a meaning of his own, quoting the Vedas, is no philosopher. True philosophy through ignorance is concealed as in the fissures of a rock. But the way of the great one, that is to be followed. And the success of his book had quite effaced from the Brahman mind the holy man's failure in bringing up his children. Basically, it is a redemption arc of his father, right? Internet has short attention span. The learned and reverend father, he followed up, up this by adding to his essay on education a 20th term containing the recipes for the reformation of pro prodigals. He turned his own experience with his fuck-up sons into content, is basically what he is saying. The learned and reverend father received his sons with open arms. He had heard from his brother-in-law that the youths were qualified to support themselves, and when informed that they wished to make a public experiment of their science, he exerted himself, despite his belief in it, forward to forward their views. The pundits and gurus were long before they would consent to attend what they considered dealings with the yama, the devil. In consequence, however, of Vishnu Swami's name in importunity at length, on a certain day, all the pious, learned, and reverend tutors, teachers, professors, prolocutors, pastors, spiritual fathers, poets, philosophers, mathematicians, schoolmasters, pedagogues, bear leaders, bear leaders, what does that mean? Institutors, gerund grinders, 
preceptors, dominis, brushers, corifae, dry nurses, coaches, mentors, monitors, lecturers, prelectors, fellows, and the heads of houses at the university at Gaur <laughs> met together in a large garden where they usually diverted themselves out of hours with ball tossing, pigeon tumbling, and kite flying. Presently, the four young men carrying their bundle of bones and the other requisites st stepped forward, walking slowly with eyes downcast like shrinking cattle. For it is said, the Brahman must not run, even when it rains. After pronouncing an impromptu speech composed for them by their father, and so stuffed with erudition that even the writer hardly understood it. They much like this text. They announce their wish to prove by ocular demonstration the truth of the science upon which their short-sighted rivals at Jayasthal had cast cold water, but which they remarked in the eloquent peroration of their discourse. The sages of Gaur had welcomed that wise and Catholic spirit of inquiry which had ever characterized their distinguished body. Huge words, involved sentences, and the... I'm wondering if this story is trolling us right now. Huge... <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing. Huge words, involved sentences, and the high-flown compliment, exceedingly undeserved, obscured, I suppose, the bright wits of the in intellectual convocation, which really began to think that their liberality of opinion deserved all praise. None objected to what was being prepared, except one of the heads of houses. His appeal was generally scouted, because his Sanskrit style was vulgarly intelligible, and he had the bad name of being a practical man. The metaphysician Rashik Lal sneered to Vaiswata, the poet, who passed on the look to the theophilosopher Varda, Varda, Vardaman. Haridat, the antiquarian, whispered the metaphysician Vasudev, who burst into a loud laugh, whilst Narayan, Jagasharma, and Devaswami, this massive name drop, but like thousands of years ago. <laughs> These were like the influencers of the day. All very learned in the Vedas, which should be a lesson to everyone about the real value of your influence. All the learned Vedas opened their eyes and stared at him with well-simulated astonishment. So he, being offended, said nothing more but arose and walked home. These are basically the people that when they had an Among Us lobby, you wanted to be in a game with these people. Dude. Okay. A great, a great crowd gathered round the four young men and their father as opening the bundle that contained the tiger's remains, <laughs> they prepared for their task. One of the operators spread the bones upon the ground and fixed each into its proper socket, for, for not forgetting even the teeth and tusks. The second connected by means of a marvelous ungent, the skeleton with the muscles and heart of an elephant, which had, they had procured for the purpose. The third drew from his pouch the brain and eyes of a large tomcat, which he carefully fitted into the animal's skull, and then covered the body with the hide of a young rhinoceros. Basically, they're necromancers. Then the fourth, the atheist, who had been directing the operation, produced a globule having another globule within itself. And as the crowd pressed on them, craning their necks, breathless with anxiety, he placed the principle of organic life in the tiger's body with such effect that the monster immediately heaved its chest, breathed, agitated its limbs, opened its eyes, jumped to its feet, shook itself, glared around, and began to gnash its teeth and lick its chops lashing the while its ribs with tail. Basically, insert necromancer, re, animate daily success. The sages sprang back. The beast sprang forward with a roar like thunder enduring elephant at time. It flew at the nearest of the spectators, flung Vishnu Swami to the ground and clawed his four sons. Then not even stopping to drink their blood, it hurried after the flying herd of wise men jostling and tumblings and stumbling and catching at one another's long robes. They rushed its hottest haste towards the garden gate, but the beast, having muscles of an elephant as well as bones of a tiger, made a few hounds of 80 or 90 feet each bounds, sorry, easily distanced them and took away all chance of escape. To be brave, <laughs> what the fuck? 
as the monster was frightfully hungry after its long fast, and as the imprudent young men had furnished it with admirable implements of destruction, it did not cease its work till 121 learned and highly distinguished pundits and gurus lay upon the ground, chawed and clawed, sucked dry, and in most cases stone dead. Amongst them, I need hardly say, were the sage Vishnu Swami and his four sons. This is why you always complete the summoning circle, the binding circle properly. That's the moral of the story. Having told this story, the vampire hung silent for a time. Presently, he re resumed. Now we get to the end, okay? Now, heed my words, Raja Vikram. I am about to ask thee, which of all of those learned men was the most finished fool? The answer is easily found, yet it must be distasteful to thee. Therefore, mortify thy vanity as soon as possible, or I shall be talking. Thou wilt be walking through the live-long night to scanty purpose. Remember, science without understanding is of little use. Indeed, understanding is superior to science, and those devoid of understanding perish, as did the persons of the reviv revivified tiger, that who revivified the tiger. Before this, I warn thee to beware of thyself and of thine own conceit. Here, then, is an opportunity for self-discipline. Which of all of those learned men was the greatest fool? The warrior king mistook... Okay, so who do you all think, before we see the king's answer, who do you think is the greatest fool? Hmm? The options are anyone in the friggin' story. <laughs> the warrior king mistook the kind of mortification imposed upon him. Now we'll get to the answer. And pondered over the uncomfortable nature of the reply in the presence of his son. Again the Baital taunted him. The greatest fool of all, at last said Vikram, is in slow and by no means willing accents, was the father. Is it not said, there is no fool like an old fool? Gramercy, cried the vampire, bursting out into discordant laugh. I now return to my tree. By this head, I have never before heard a father who so readily condemn a father. With those words, he disappeared, slipping out of the bundle. The Raja scolded his son a little for want of obedience and said that he had always thought more highly of his acuteness. Never could he have believed that he would have been taken in by sh so shallow a trick. Dharma Dvaj answered, that's the prince, not a word to this, but promised to be wiser another time. Then they returned to the tree and it did what they had so often done before. And as before, the Baital had he held his tongue for a long time. Presently, he began as follows. That was actually pretty good. Maybe I will tell the story I will read and summarize and tell properly next time, okay? So that's great because the Baital asks him, who's the biggest fool? And he says, the dead. And as the dead says it, the Baital laughs because the dead is the dead. And he has now been made a fool. And then what does the dead do? When the dead screws up and blames the other dead, he scolds the son. Why are you not wise, son? Thereby also proving the point that the father is the idiot. Get it? Pepe left got him. Just as Severi is saying. <laughs> Espresso Dan subscribed with Prime Gaming to this shit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, you know, the story's pretty good. It's just, I was like, wait, is this some like next level troll? Like the, the layers, it's like a Russian doll of trolls. It's like the Baital is trolling the king and gets the king to not only break the promise, but troll the dad in the story. 
And then we're the ones also being trolled because the point of the story is that a lot of fancy words don't matter without understanding. And there we are. Like the book has like lists of words. Did y'all get that with the professions? I'm going to read it one more time. It's just a, it's a, it's a book of copy pastas. And then there's a random necromancy at the end where they animate some creature and it just starts killing people. Like what on earth? There's a, a random like anti-atheist, sli slightly misogynistic kind of, it's like, yeah, this Ranma one half is basically saying it's the history of trolling and they told that story while trolling us. Like what on earth, dude, this is so next level. I did not expect the, the random. So weird, man. Here it is. We're going to do this one more time, okay? In consequence, however, of Vishnu Swami's name and importunity at length, on a certain day, all the pious, learned, and reverend tutors, teachers, professors, prolocutors, pastors, spiritual fathers, poets, philosophers, mathematicians, schoolmasters, pedagogues, bear leaders, institutions, gerund, gerund grinders, preceptors, dominies, brushers, corfi, dry nurses, coaches, mentors, monitors, lecturers, prelectors, fellows, and the heads of houses at the University of Gower. So I think what this guy was doing is he's like, I'm going to make a list of professions and then I'm just going to make up a couple of words. Like, I'm just going to make some shit up in the middle, like bear leaders and gerund grinders. And people are just going to read this shit and they're going to think it's a thing. Like. What? Right. Are, I mean, are these real words? Like, is this. I mean, this this story is like probably realistically thousands of years old. Was the, is there such thing as a gerund grinder? Like, did you do your dailies today? Nah, man. I don't have time to grind dailies, or grind XP, or grind money. I'm grinding gerunds, bro. Do you even? Do you even Jaren grind, bro? All right. You guys want you guys want a real bedtime story? Let's do a real bedtime story in a second. Which book is this? Baital Pachisi, which is a a group of not really bedtime stories, but they're like old stories about a vampire and Raja Vikram. I've got actually a good story for y'all. Okay, so that's a real thing, Ellipsian. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, chat. We gotta like bring that term back, okay? Just just like use it. Let, okay, let's do this experiment. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we can claim credit for this if it happens. So we're going to start using the term gerund grinder on the internet. Okay? Just use it. And let's see if it ever, like, this experiment succeeds if you ever see someone who's not a part of this community, use it. Okay? That's going to be our experiment. Let's see. Because there aren't, I mean, how many people are here right now? Let's see. Okay, there's a thousand people here. That's a lot. All right, so there's like 1,201 people who are going to be inducted in the secret of Jaron grinding. Okay. What's a Jaron grinder? I don't really know. Maybe it's like a grammar Nazi. Who knows? But what do I tell people? That's the thing. You don't just use it. It's like, bro. Why are you feeding this game? Like, dude, stop being a Jaren grinder. It's like, hey, stop getting on my case. Stop grinding my Jarens. <laughs> I don't know. 
Just start start using it right from there. Use it whatever you want to. Oh yeah, y'all are going out tonight. No, sorry, I can't. I can't make it. I gotta grind some gerunds. Oh no no no! I'm sorry. The relationship didn't really work out. Yeah, she was just a little bit too much of a gerund grinder. You know. <laughs> okay, so let me um. Let me just see real quick. What do we want to do now? It, oh. So there is a story that I actually want to read to y'all. So I don't, I mean, as much as I want to expand my kids' vocabulary and all that, I don't actually read them this book. Um, but there is a bedtime story that I do read to my kids, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome story, which I want to go get. But it's upstairs in their bedroom. So I'm going to run and go grab it. And I want to stick around. This is actually a good story. You all have probably heard it before, but it's great. I think it's a story that exemplifies the mission of our community. So I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> this is great, dude. Y'all are geniuses. Seriously. Oh my god, that one mosquito in my room. Aired Natio. Oh my god, that one mosquito in my room is grinding my gerund. <laughs> Good luck grinding those gerunds tomorrow. God, it's so good. Okay. You guys want Texas voice? Sure. So. Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. All right. Oh. Fantastic. It's got an inscription. Let me just make sure. Okay. We'll, we'll read that. We're going to do takes and accent this time, all right? So y'all just settle in. Get ready to be put to bed. It's night time here. It's time to go to sleep. We're going to talk to y'all about dreaming tonight. Y'all ready? Oh, the places you'll go. By Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in a direction you choose. You're on your own. and You know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look, look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any knots a good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down 
And in that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stoop. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sats. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high hats. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say, but sadly it's true, that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, and your gang will fly on, you'll be left in the lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters? Or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find. For a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into a race down long wiggled roads at a breakneck in pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed, I fear, toward a most useless pace, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow, everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting round for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip-flapping, once more you'll ride high. Ride for anything under the sky. Ready, because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the win winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, Alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and though your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's 
great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will, indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name, Bobom or Bixie, or Bray, or Mordecai, Ali, Van Allen, O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. The end. Have you all heard uh, of the places you'll go? Seriously, though, Dr. Seuss is the ultimate gerund grinder. Can I ask y'all something, though? So I don't know if it, the, the pictures, the artwork in the book is amazing, too. I don't know if you guys have seen this. But I thought this was kind of interesting. I sometimes wonder, can I read y'all something? No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. And this is the picture. I don't know if you guys have seen this. But I wonder if the brace of the halig tree is inspired, like, is inspired by this. I sometimes wonder if people at FromSoft have, have just, like, looked at this. It's like, yeah, the boom bands are playing. I know. I didn't show you all the pictures. I, I was also, I, I'm not, I can read, can I read a book on stream? That's okay. Why did the chick takes his voice stop? It's time to go to bed, little one. Elden Seuss, dude. That would be an epic mod. Yeah, so I, th I think it's kind of interesting because, like, I like this book a lot, but I think my kids, they sort of liked it for a little while and they moved on. But I think it's, like, actually better for y'all, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... I have some thoughts floating around in my head. Let me think for a second. I think sometimes we just need someone to read us a bedtime story. You know, we have these bedtime stories, and if you think about what we do for kids, oftentimes going to bed for kids it's like a pleasant experience, right? Stressful for parents, but like it's the one time in your day where like as a kid, well, not the one time, but it's like a, it's a guaranteed time of your day where hopefully if you're lucky, parents are there, they're reading you a story, you get to relax a little bit. And sometimes I wonder how different of a place the world would be if we all got the opportunity to be put to bed the way that we do for kids. Where it's like, we're going to wind you down. You're going to relax for a little bit. We're going to read you a story. The story is going to be inspirational. It's going to be positive. And then you're going to go to sleep. And not these. You know? So here Weaves is saying, I never had that, so I don't know what I'm missing out on. That's really unfortunate. I feel sad for anyone who didn't have that growing up. To a certain degree, I actually, now that I think about it, I didn't have that growing up. I mean, but I, I had plenty of other things, but just didn't get read bedtime stories. But that's the kind of thing where, like, you know, just because you didn't have it then, I hope that you one day have a relationship with someone. It doesn't even have to be romantic, where you feel close enough to where you can you know, be read a bedtime story. 
Kyo Demon saying, thank you for the story time and, and rough patch at that moment. And that really hit me different. Yeah, it's a powerful story, right? As Dr. Seuss says, hangups and bangups will happen to you because you're at the head of the pack and then you fall behind and you don't have a good time. And that's life. Oh, the places you'll go. So Kyo Demon, get up and start on your way. You've got mountains to move and they're waiting today. All right. Ooh. Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear. Fantastic books. Harder to read at bedtime, as bedtime stories. But hey, if we finish that Vikram the, the Vampire story, I'm pretty sure that that was like about as long as Wise Man's Fear, right? So we can handle that. Okay. So I think we're about wrapped up. So thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, we are going to go ahead and if y'all are asleep or sleepy or ready to kind of move on, that's totally fine. Right? So I wish y'all a pleasant night. We will be raiding someone. Oh, so Amaranth is streaming ASMR. So let's raid Amaranth. So if y'all are still in the mood for more ASMR, then go ahead and join Amaranth's stream. And uh, wait, is that not a good idea? Should I? Nope. Bold move? No? Okay, hold on. Back. Okay, I'm just... All right, then we'll, we'll raid... QT Cinderella is okay to raid? Yeah, okay. We'll raid QT Cinderella then. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jared grind. So we'll, uh, we'll see you all tomorrow, actually. So we're going to be streaming tomorrow. So... We'll see you all at noon central time, and I hope that everyone has a restful night. Take care.